Rocket Lab recently reported their Q2 results for 2024. Following earnings, founder and CEO Sir Peter Beck, as well as CFO Adam Spice, sat down to take some questions from retail investors. This panel included Dave G, Vince's Bullish, Matt Farley, and yours truly. In today's video, let's go over some of the key takeaways from earnings, as well as some of the highlights from the interview. My name is Scott. Welcome to the channel. Let's talk Rocket Lab. So starting with the Electron, Rocket Lab came in with a slight beat on launch revenue. For Q2, Rocket Lab was guiding for 28 to 29 million, in which they came in at 29.4. For Q3, they're guiding for 21 million, which accounts for three launches in total. So far this quarter, we've already seen Rocket Lab launch for Synspective on August 2nd, and a few days later for Capella on August 11th. Looking ahead, it seems like Rocket Lab's next launch will be their second launch with French Internet of Things provider Kines, expected to take place in September. Previously thought to also be in Q3 was a launch with Black Sky that would deliver the first of their next-gen satellites, but reported during Black Sky's earnings is that we can now expect this launch to take place in Q4. When Rocket Lab was asked about the number of launches to expect in Q4, a range of 4 to 7 was given, with 5 being the most realistic, in my opinion. With 22 launches originally guided for in 2024, it now seems more likely that Rocket Lab will end up with something closer to 16. Reducing 22 down to 16 doesn't sound great, but it's also worth keeping in mind that in 2023, Rocket Lab launched a total of 10 times. So despite this setback, launch count is still expected to be up 60% year over year. Circling back, there were five new launches announced, bringing Rocket Lab to a total of 17 new Electron launches signed year to date. 13 of these launches were signed in Q2, with the other four, this confidential Constellation customer, being signed in Q3. The fifth previously undisclosed launch was a new Haste contract. Now, if you're not new to the channel, you'll understand that when I heard this Haste launch being announced, I was under the impression that this is the, the unannounced Haste launch that's supposed to be happening still this year. But during the interview with Peter and Adam, I had a chance to ask them about the approximate time frame for these new launches, and Peter responded that the Haste launches are a bit longer leaved. So it's almost given at this point, it's almost guaranteed at this point, that this third or maybe fourth Haste launch this year is no longer happening. Before we move away from Haste, I gotta give a shout out to one of the questions that Matt Farley asked. We obviously saw each other's questions prior to the interview, so when I saw this particular one from Matt about if um, if Wallops is going to be, <laughs> if Haste is gonna be launching outside of Wallops, I was sure that Matt was just going to receive kind of a political answer of like, yeah, we've thought about it, but nothing to announce today, so next question. Instead, Peter said that Haste is planned to be launching outside of other sites. And I thought that was a big get for Matt, right? Because if you would have just said another site, I mean, it would have been easy to just deduce like, okay, well, New Zealand, right? I've already kind of been under the impression Rocket Lab is going to launch from other sites, whether it's its own themselves or it's kind of like a wallops situation i don't know if it would be within the, the u.s as well i don't think they would have three different launch sites all within uh, the usa but like maybe you know i mean they did set up that australian subsidiary not long ago that would pair nicely with another setup where neutron and electron are launching out of the same site they've mentioned in the past that there's not enough fuel on the mainland of new zealand but i mean Let's go a little north. Let's go to Australia, baby. Um, finally, before we move away from the Electron, during the 51st Electron launch, it was mentioned that there is a new generation battery system on the second stage that allows for an increased payload capacity on the Electron. I was able to ask Peter about this capacity upgrade, and he mentioned it's a single digit percentage increase at best. So with Capstone as Rocket Lab's heaviest lift to date at 325 kilograms, a payload increase of 5 to 9% brings the Electron to an updated capacity of 340 
to 354 kilograms. Peter also mentioned that the Electron Booster reuse is still on the fence for a 2024 attempt, as it is a low priority compared to our next topic, the Neutron. The big news coming out of the earnings was that Neutron's Archimedes engine is now breathing fire, but my biggest takeaway regarding the Neutron is the commentary that Adam provided during the interview where he mentioned that including third parties, $210 million of the Neutron spend is complete, with a total spend of $300 million still expected despite the six-month pushback we saw earlier this year. So as of Q2 end, Rocket Lab has $547 million in net liquidity, including cash and equivalents, securities, and restricted cash. In Q2, we saw less of a liquidity burn than usual, though it's safe to assume that we'll see a higher burn rate going forward through the remainder of Neutron's development. Even with a retrace in liquidity burn, Rocket Lab still has plenty of ammunition to reach profitability. Moving into space systems, Rocket Lab guided for 77 to 81 million for the second quarter and arrived just shy of that window at 76.9. Looking ahead, Q3 Space Systems guide is for 79 to 84 million, bringing Q3 total revenue guide to 100 to 105 million dollars to the quarter. This represents growth of 52% year over year and negative 3.5% quarter over quarter. As of June 30th, Space Systems backlog was at 773 million. When asked about this backlog, Adam mentioned that 150 million of this is subsystems and components, leaving us with roughly 623 million for satellite manufacturing. So circling back to launch, Rocket Lab has 294 million launch backlog within the same period. Combining this with Space Systems brings Rocket Lab's combined backlog to 1.1 billion, of which 44% is expected to be recognized within the next 12 months. In other words, 469 million. Comparing this to the 12 month period prior is outlined to reflect year over year growth of 44%. Now, before we move away from backlog, it's worth mentioning that a number of updates have been made to the valuation model that I referenced to make these videos. The backlog has now been expanded to include comparisons between previous guidance and what was actually realized. Next is a section that keeps track of the time frame in which the contracts are being included into backlog. Then past that we have a section that details customer concentration and another that details customer geography. Also included in this update is a tab that details ownership history and management compensation and another new tab that compares what retail is expecting to what Wall Street is expecting. Finally, the valuation model has been updated to include all of the new information that we've gone over today, plus updated price targets that go all the way out to 2030. So if you got value from the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the Patreon, whether it's for the valuation models or just to support the channel. It's the price of a cup of coffee, so how could you go wrong? You guys are the best. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one. Have an awesome day. Peace. Wait, what the fuck?